Hello everyone, Infosec Gurung here and we'll be doing step 15. I hope you are following the tutorial well and let's go. Let's turn off a few few more flags and these are all miscellaneous flags. So there would be more input flag, then there would be more, uh, then we need to add a control flag, okay. And uh, first let's add that and here it, uh, here we can see that it compiles but with no observable effects. Fine. So let's just add this in our kilo.c flag. Okay. So we need to add brkint. Okay, then I N P C K. And I S T R I P. So I'm following whatever is written here like in same order. Fine. And uh, then we need to add the control flag. Oops. Okay, raw dot c c flag and here it's um eight not equal to c s eight c s eight okay c s eight and that's what is written here um just a minute yeah i think Okay, no, it's the bitwise and operator which we need to use. So it's this, fine. And uh, we can save, save it and compile it. Okay. Let's just see how it goes. Like, let's execute our text editor kilo. And yeah, it works the same way. Enter is 13 exit is 26 escape is 27 then delete has like four characters okay then enter is 32 that's all fine control c is 3 and we exit with a q this step won't have uh, any observable effect for you because these flags are either or already turned off or they won't really apply to modern ter terminal emulators okay and these all flags come from our terminus.h that's fine but at one time or another switching off switching them off was considered by someone to be a part of enabling raw mode and so we carry on the tradition of whoever that someone was in our program that's fine okay so when brkint was turned on a break condition uh, will cause a sig in sig int signal to be sent back to the program like pressing ctrl c okay I in PCK enables parity checking, which doesn't seem to apply to modern terminal emulators. Now, um, I had doubts on parity checking because I really don't know what it is. Okay. And so I will be uh, putting this Eddie Wu's YouTube video on parity checking and what it is. So you can check that out. Okay. And till then, let's go to brkint is turned on a break condition will cause a sig int signal to be sent to the program okay, so what is break okay this would again be in the links below in the description normally a uh, receive or transmit signal data signal stays at the mark voltage until a new character is transferred if that signal is dropped to the space voltage for a long period of time usually one fourth to two to half a second then a break condition is set, set to exist okay now this is something which you can research more on because this is like uh, i think it's this break condition is meant for like terminal as in like the linux terminal fine so 
you can just research more on that if you want to or else we can know like this is enough although i hope you understood because i didn't and i'll read like more three times so that i understand this so this is like three minutes 17 minute video 17 seconds video sorry so you can watch that problem, right and it's a what we call a, yeah. uh, an unstructured problem and i'll pause it so um i understood like a bit of what parity checking is and like why we need it and uh Oh, what, what what was the general use case of it like um, in, in systems when like let, let's suppose like from A to B there is a signal which has been sent in, in bits and bytes okay so like one byte has eight bits and suppose like one bit is um, flipped to uh, like from one to zero then the person at B doesn't know that the signal has been turned to uh, zero like one of the bit was turned to zero so that was the reason why this parity checking uh, was um, used okay you can just watch this video and like two to three times and you'll get to know like what i mean that's fine okay so like if um, this could be like uh, our brkint could normally uh, normally mean like um, there like a is sending a signal to b and let's suppose that signal doesn't uh, let's suppose that b doesn't receive that signal for like 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 second maybe because of some something in the middle came up okay so that means it's a break condition i think this is what it is fine then um, okay then i s TRIP uh, causes the 8 bit of each input byte to be stripped meaning it will set it to 0 this is probably already turned off okay now each input byte because one byte is 8 bits so the 8th bit is set to 0 fine now CS8 is not a flag it is a bit mask with multiple bits which we are set uh, set which we set using the bitwise or operator which is the straight line of straight line um, key okay like this one okay it's like generally above your enter and you need to press shift like there would be this this key okay like the backslash key and then if you press shift and then the backslash key then it would enable like uh, it then it would print the straight straight um, stick yeah so it is a bit mask uh, with multiple bits which we are setting using the bit my bitwise or operator unlike all the flags which we have turned off that's fine and it sets the character size cs oh okay cs means character size to 8 bits per byte and yeah that's that okay and it doesn't have like any observable effects which is true because if you actually see in our previous video i uh, we um, like in our step 14 after this um, like if you compare the previous video and like this video there isn't much change on how it functions like control C will obviously print 3 then control E prints 5 then control Q prints 17 S like we remove the software control uh, flow software flow control like which is control S and control Q like those signals that's fine now the only way we can exit is like using q and not even like control z or c so again i told you that before we have come to the end of this video i hope you understood something from step 15 yeah and i'll see you in the next video which would be step 16